This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. It's only a kick. A jump. A block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle. A run. It's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's Thursday, March 13th, 2024. Born on this date in 1954, Congressman Gary Palmer of Hackleburg in 1972 former Buffalo Bills running back Antoine Smith of Millbrook. Now today we have a nay vote on TikTok, a big spin by a Birmingham utility, and a Hall of Famer. I'm Mike Morgan and we're down in Alabama. The United States House of Representatives Wednesday morning overwhelmingly passed the bill that would effectively either force the sale of TikTok or ban it in the U.S., and Alabama's delegation was almost unanimous on the issue. Now, as you probably know by now, at issue is the Chinese company ByteDance's ownership of the social media giant and worries over whether Chinese communist access to the personal data of more than 150 million Americans is a security threat. Support for the bill has grown as the Biden administration has warmed up to it, although it'll be a tougher road in the Senate than the 325 to 65 vote in the House. Now, six members of Alabama's House delegation, five Republicans and one Democrat, voted in favor. Only Representative Barry Moore, the Republican who currently represents District 2, but just won the GOP nomination for remapped District 1, voted against. Moore explained that he voted as he did because he believes a ban would violate the free speech rights of all those Americans who are choosing to use the platform. Instead, he'd like to see a different approach. Quote, We need to protect Americans' data from bulk exports by foreign adversaries like the Chinese Communist Party, but targeting a singular company is not the right way to do it. Congress should restrict data transfers, not companies. End quote. Now, we've seen some real buyers' real estate markets over the past few years, but... It seems to be getting next level when a property valued at $79,000 goes for nearly half a million. AL.com's Joseph D. Bryant reports that Birmingham Waterworks paid $450,000 for a cabin on a Blunt County lake. Its plans for the cabin? Not a thing. You see, the Waterworks has been buying and demolishing structures built on Inland Lake for 20 years now. Inland Lake is one of its drinking water sources for the Birmingham Hoover metro area. Waterworks officials have said they are reclaiming the property to protect the lake from septic systems. Numerous people own the buildings and long-term lease land that was inherited by the Waterworks back in the 90s. When those land lease contracts are put up for sale, the Waterworks has first option to buy. And they go by asking price. Apparently, there are some bold askers out there. Bo Jackson was such a phenomenon during the late 80s and early 90s that even though that hip injury ended his football career and certainly slowed his baseball career, accolades are still coming in. The first Major League Baseball team Jackson played for, the Kansas City Royals, is inducting him into the team's Hall of Fame, reports AL.com's Mark and Abinett. Jackson spent five seasons with the Royals, from 1986 through 1990, before he was released after his football injury in January of 91. He later played with the White Sox and Angels. Now, his biggest season with the Royals was in 1989, when he hit 32 home runs, drove in 105 runs, and became the first player to homer and steal a base in the same All-Star game. Jackson, of course, had legendary baseball and football careers at Auburn, And he was already a star coming out of McAdory High School. His Royals Hall of Fame ceremony is scheduled for June 29th at Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City. 
Thank you all so much for listening. We'll be back here again tomorrow. Until then, y'all come by and see us on the internet at al.com. Thank you.